It is ridiculously hot today. Well, probably not, just I'm ridiculously not able to do heat and I am trying to code my data but I think my brain has been cooked and I'm looking at it and thinking so I'm trying to code my data because I have a viva on Thursday and my supervisor said it would be a good idea to be able to show that you've coded some of your data. So so obviously I thought, oh, I'll try and code all of my data, which may not have been the right thought. Um, but I'm looking at the stuff that I have. And what I've been doing is I've been going into the field, which makes it sound like you would be putting on camo paint and like, crawling on your elbows but I've just been going into a school and attempting to do research with people with profound intellectual and multiple disabilities and I won't explain about that because probably there's me explaining about that on a different video um oh there was I was just explaining it on the inclusion conversation recently so I'll pop a link to that below um but what I do is I go in and then I write up um what happened and what I experienced or what I observed and then that write-up which is like a a diary of the experience that becomes my data and that's what's analysed um, but I write what I think I write about what I sensed and what I felt as well but but once you write those things down even though they were felt or sensed things before you wrote them writing them turns them into thoughts and my work is, I was going to say fundamentally, and then I was questioning whether I can claim the whole word, but fundamentally, probably, my work is fundamentally embodied. Like when I am attempting to be with people with profound intellectual and multiple disabilities, I'm not attempting a connection through intellect, through thought, because I can't presume that they have access to that. It's a felt, lived, physically experienced, embodied connection. And so I bring my body to my work. And since starting this work, I've noticed my body change. And I've noticed my sensations change. And I was getting in the shower the other day and I looked down at myself and I thought, like, this, this is data now. And I was asking my supervisors, you know, how, how much of me do you want in this exam, in this viva? Because I can present my written data, my thoughts, but I almost feel like I should be going like in here's the flesh of it because this was a a flesh done thing not a brain done thing and it's it's weird having your body change and it's changing my sensations too so i'm an autistic researcher and autistic people are known for having differences in their sensory processing it's very common for autistic people to be overwhelmed by aspects of the sensory world. I experience differences with my visual processing, particularly, um, and and to some degree, I'm not sure if tactile is the right word for it. It's more um, enclosure stuff, but it doesn't matter. And to do my work, try again, Joe. Um, so I said my brain was cooked. Um, I have those sensory differences and I've had them always and I have learned how to live in a world that is designed for people who sense other than me and part of how I've done that I guess is by learning to suppress some of what I feel or to ignore or to disconnect, and it's very common for autistic people to dis 
dissociate from their bodies and that's something that I experience a lot. It's also very common for people who've experienced trauma and with the autistic population are a highly traumatized group. So it all sort of overlaps. Um, but in order to do my work, in order to be and to try and be with people with profound intellectual and multiple disabilities, I've had to call back into action or take away those blocks so that I can completely feel so that I'm bringing my being to being with, not just my thinking. <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be much better at this if I was just asked to bring my thinking. I'm all right at thinking. I'm rubbish at being. And what I found with the being stuff is I'm, I'm getting better at it. Like I'm, I'm feeling more, but I can't switch it off. And so I'm finding day-to-day -day life much more overwhelming than I used to. And I don't know if it's a good or a bad thing. I, I think it will go one way or the other. I think I'll either crash and burn and and I just won't be able to handle all of it and I'll have to stop and, you know, learn to block it all up again. And my supervisors have been really supportive and they've said, well, you know, we need to... Because I... But they're aware that I have... My head tends to make rules as to when I'll do things. And, and they've said something very gentle like, um, you need to stop going into the field when it's right or something. It was something vague like that rather than at the deadline that you've set yourself. So in my head, I'm going into the field until the end of this chronological year, and I am, you know. <laughs> but I think what they were saying was like, maybe you, you are allowed to stop sooner than that if, if that becomes relevant. Um, so yeah, so either I'll, I'll crash and burn, and I've, I've crashed and burned before, so it's not, as, I mean, it is dramatic, but, I know it's something that I can do and and come back from. Or what's the other option that I that I get to be somebody who feels all the things all the time and can handle that? Who is associated with their body all the time? Like there's something oh there's something quite um like sort of twinkly and magical about the idea of being a sensing being of not having to do all that like suppressing of stuff and blocking out stuff but then I suppose it's not very practical is it because I'd still be living in a world where it's not it's not manageable so it's a really weird puzzle and I should probably just focus on trying to get my code trees in order so that on Thursday I can go, here's the things I've sought. <laughs> probably, probably shouldn't turn up and go, here's my flesh. Because they'll, they'll write me off as um, in need of mental health support right away. But you'll see how it goes.